Bonjour, I'm Emily, I'm an OM System Ambassador and for this video we're going to talk a lot about composition and how to improve your photography. I'm going to give you some tips to set up your camera properly and then we'll go into what I look for when I'm out in the field, how I'm going to frame my shot, uh, is it going to be horizontal, vertical and uh, I'm going to give you some tips about how to position yourself as well. So. Let's get into it. We'll start with the customization of your camera. As you know, I've been repeating it quite a lot in my videos. Uh, I love to have a camera that reflects who I am as a photographer. And I like to be an effective photographer, an efficient photographer. And that's why I have my C1 that's customized just for bird photography. And that's just a starting point for me. So one thing that's very very important with bird photography is i think we can all agree on this one is the shutter speed as a starting point i like to do 1250 of a second it's just my starting point because you're going to have herons that are going to be slower bigger birds are slower so i might go a little lower and a faster bird like a hummingbird i mean it's like it's like shooting a race car, right? You want to go really, really high. Um, so it will depend. And then you have to take into consideration um, the weather, the light. So depending on um, how much I can, you know, how much light I have available, uh, I'll be able to push maybe a little higher my shutter speed just to be safe. But as a starting point, that's where I am. And then I'll move it back and forth. So, if you think your photograph is not sharp enough, maybe that's because you did not have a shutter speed that was fast enough. So try practicing with your shutter speed and see. Uh, I like to go out every morning and take photos of Cormoran taking uh, off and landing. And then I will practice with different shutter speed and analyze it afterwards uh, when I'm back home. That's a really good exercise and I really recommend that you do that and see how your photo is improving with the different shutter speed. Now, I also uh, like to customize some of the buttons. So uh, if in the front I will do a magnifying glass so I can see if I'm really in focus with the bird. And uh, focus picking is also another great tool that we most of us have in our cameras and that you can use just to make sure that you know your bird is in focus. Also what type of focus point are you using? Are you using just one focus point? Are you using all your focus points? In my OM1 I have bird AI so it's bird detection so it will basically track the subject for me. I know I am really lucky and three years ago you know you didn't have that option but now a lot of the new cameras have them. So it really uh, helps me to focus on my composition and a little less on uh, focusing. Well, actually, that reminds me that I should tell you about back button focusing. So my AF on right here helps me to get the focus. I focus with the back button and then I can uh, press to get the picture. A lot of wildlife photographers are actually using back button uh, focusing. I really, really recommend it. I don't know why the two are together. Uh, so you can focus right now on this bird and then you can recompose. And I know the focus is going to be right there. Uh, it's really, really useful. So uh, try it and uh, let me know how you like it in the comments below. For other settings, for bird photography, a lot of people will tell you, oh, you need to keep your ISO very low. That's true, that's best, because then you have less work to do when you are post-processing your photo. But, um, you know, with the camera we have right now, you can really push your ISO and you have a lot of tools that you can use afterwards uh, that will reduce some of the noise that you will have. 
but please don't be afraid to push your ISO to get your photos. Let's talk about how to improve your composition because I told you now I, I don't even have to really pay too much attention to my focus because my camera is doing it for me. So let's think about composition. What is a good composition? What is a bad composition? Well, you want to make sure that the whole subject is in your frame. Uh, my mom, when she takes photos, she sometimes cut part of my body. <laughs> doesn't make a good photo. It's the same principle for birds. So don't be like my mom. I hope she's not watching this video because she's not going to be happy with me. But yes, you don't want to clip those wings. You don't want to clip those legs. They're integral part of your bird. So one trick that I learned very early on uh, when I started photography was to uh, have a circle to do a circle with my eye around the frame so when i'm looking for the viewfinder i'm just looking at a, a, all around am i clipping winds is there something that's coming out of my frame so do that exercise when you are out practicing you know just in your viewfinder follow the bird and make sure that you're not clipping any wings or any feet another thing is when you're doing um, portrait or when you're trying to get um, um, some birds doing some behaviors you don't want to start shooting a teeny tiny wobblers and be like this don't shoot it from above that's not very flattering um, you want to shoot it at eye level so you want to go down and make sure that you are eye level with your subject Remember, the most important part of your photo is the eye. You want to draw attention to the eye. So it needs to be sharp and it needs to be at eye level with you. They are just so cute. They have such an expression. I mean, <laughs> they look like just a little angry. Very cute. One trick to make your photo look sharper is pay attention to your background. If you have more contrast with your background, your bird is going to look sharper. So pay attention to the light, pay attention to the background. Also, if I'm shooting a bird and the background is super noisy, I mean, that's quite a noisy background, but it's also a little bit pleasing because you have all those lines that are the same. But if I had a tree with all those branches, like the egret that we saw earlier on, that would not work uh, because that would be so distracting from your subject. So make sure that your background is a clean background. So for example, this lens is the 40 to 150. So it's a f2.8. Uh, it's pretty bright lens. So I can shoot wide open and it's going to blur my background. Beautiful, beautiful, blurry, creamy background. And that will really, really help my subject pop. And the, the background behind the egret is, oof. It's a bit rough, unfortunately. So it's just too, too, it's just too busy. So to me, it doesn't work. It's a beautiful bird, but I don't like what's behind. Another heron is completely hidden behind the grass. So we'll see. Maybe it's gonna come up and uh, hunt. Another tip to improve your composition is move around. Remember I told you I don't like to have a tripod because I think it's gonna make me feel like I cannot move around and you don't wanna do that. Shoot without a tripod and move around. Take a couple of photos. Is that a good angle? Do, do you like what you have? Even if you like what you have, move around because there might be a better angle and you will only know it if you move around. So here the egret is a little bit detached so I think I have a little bit more to work with than just having uh, the egret super super close to the branch. So just move around you know yes you get excited take a couple of shots and then look at different angles go up 
go down, um, go around your subject and, uh, and see what works. And then you have multiple shots because with our camera nowadays, it's not a problem. It's not film cameras. So just take as many shots as you want. And then when you're processing your image, see which composition you like better. Uh, but don't just do one shot. Just move around, look for different angles. What is the story uh, on the marsh today? Uh, who are my characters? What are, are they going to do? <gasps> the coyote is coming down the hill. Oh my god. We said it, it was a bird video because it started to look like a, a coyote video. <laughs> the coyote Seri from B&H. We're going to have to rename it. So it's been quite a journey and uh, I don't know about you, but I had a lot of fun. We saw uh, a lot of birds and even a coyote and a harrier trying to fight with the coyote. I have never seen that. So it was just a fantastic experience and a reminder, you never know what you will find. We learned that taking the time to approach your subject is of the uttermost importance. We saw some great egrets that were far away. We let them be, we came back, and then we got the chance to see them closer. You never really know what you're gonna find, but you definitely have the time to slow down. And that's what you should be doing when you're taking a photo. In my next video, I will pick my four favorite photographs and I will show you what tools I use to edit those photos. And I will show you how a few tips, especially for bird photography. So I hope you will join me on my next video about editing and uh, have a great week. See you soon. Au revoir.